Okay, finally now, the patient passed his winning trial. He has adequate NIF, negative inspiratory force, and RSBI, and positive cuff leak test. Again, for details about these, please watch my previous videos on winning process. Now it's time to extubate. We tell RT, okay, now we are ready to extubate. RT usually wants to know the next step from you. Extubate to what? To room air, to nasal cannula, to BiPAP, to vapotherm. So you need to decide. So for example, a extubate to nasal cannula at three liter per minute, for example, and keep auto sat above 92%, for example, so respiratory therapist will doesn't ha doesn't have to come back to you. They can adjust the oxygen accordingly. So, and you tell them please extubate the patient with this. Of course, make sure and it's already should have been done of all sedations. And again, the patient, as I said, is awake enough. So we need to have suction ready the oxygen source or to source or the machine that we need with our BiPAP or Vaporthem ready to be there. The patient nurse to be there as well with RT. And then what they do is we explain to the patient again what we're going to do. And then we tell the patient, please, as soon as we pull the tube, cough try to clear secretion and we have suction ready to suction any secretion then remove the ET tube and then we ask the patient cough cough and we suction this is cough word sorry I don't know strong cough and suction and we put him in the oxygen and continue very important close monitoring because reintubation and failure of weaning happens usually in the first, mainly in the first few hours and the first 24 hours. So we keep them in the ICU 24 hours after extubation. Of course, there are some exceptions with the clause monitoring of their vital signs, including oxygenation, respiratory uh, sec uh, secretions, their O2 requirement, and all these signs to make sure the patient does well. I have to mention that, and of course, please keep in PO the very first few uh, during the first at least few hours until you make sure, and then you can test the patient swallowing afterward and this is something we will discuss in details when we talk about mainly in the ICU uh, course that I'm planning to do um, very soon. Uh, there is two things I want to in COPD the study showed there is a an improved success uh, successful rate of extubation and decrease reintubation if you extubate to BiPAP. So it's recommended that you extubate COPD people. If you have any doubt that they may not pass or there is a risk of reintubation, extubate them to BiPAP. The other scenario is pulmonary edema. It's recommended as well. When you do weaning is try to do TPs or do pressure support with zero support. That mean the risk of re I'm sorry it's rebound pulmonary edema will be very little. And if there is any question also, you can simply uh, extubate them to BiPAP that will help because that positive pressure, once you remove it, some patient may get rebound pulmonary edema. So you need to of course make sure they are diuresed well and use this mechanism to make sure they are ready and you won't have any problem extubating them and if there is any issue you can use BiPAP as well so that's for COPD and pulmonary edema uh, 